Well, folks, the spoopy season is among us, or was among us by the time this video was uploaded. So let's talk about a spoopy episode. One of the many things that modern day Thomas just doesn't experiment with is tone. Every episode in Bwaba, and even the majority of the Brenner era before it, are all the same in terms of tone. They're all very light-hearted stories that end on a happy note. The morals are all very clearly stated, and there's nothing left for the audience to really think about. No grander scope or interesting perspectives. They just wrap everything up, and everyone is always happy. More times than not, episodes end with the characters all laughing. <laughs> Once you notice it, you'll never unnotice it. That's not to say it's a bad thing per se, but more variants would have been appreciated and would have left its young audience with more to think about after. This is where classic Thomas triumphs. The older episodes wonderfully vary so much in tone. The old crew didn't let their children-centric audience restrict them on the kinds of stories they wanted to tell. We had a big share of happy episodes, of course, even ones that were so happy and heartwarming that they'd pull on your heartstrings a little. They can if they're mended, old faithful, smiled his driver. And that's what's going to happen to you. You deserve it. But for every happy episode, there was a sad one that ended on a depressing note. He wondered if he would ever be allowed to pull trains again. But I think he deserved his punishment. Or a really action-packed episode that was very adventurous and nail-biting. <laughs> or an episode with no moral that just existed to make us laugh. Ouch! Said Oliver. Ouch! 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 Classic Thomas told all kinds of genres of stories, and that was part of its universal appeal. Kids that liked action could enjoy the fast-paced runaway episodes. Kids that liked comedy could enjoy the funny episodes. And kids that liked creepy stuff could enjoy the spooky episodes. Variances in tone expand a child's perspective of the world. It makes them look at the world in a different way and helps them learn what kinds of genres they enjoy. It helps build perspective. And in terms of tone, I think the spooky episodes are what Classic Thomas excelled at the most. And there's no spookier episode than Duncan Gets Spooked. The atmosphere of Thomas's spooky episodes is unmatched. When it came to visuals, these were always top-notch. Thomas was never a stranger to scary visuals, and it really makes me pissed off when I see articles and clickbait videos about how scary Thomas was and how it's too inappropriate for kids. Honestly, f that. Yeah, sometimes this stuff was kind of scary, but that's a good thing. If you ask me, kids need to be scared every now and then. Scary visuals stick with kids. Yeah, they might be scared in the moment, but they're going to remember it. And the lesson this stuff teaches will stick with them as a result of that. And when they get older, they'll look back on it and respect it. A personal example of this for me is Thomas Percy and the Dragon. The shot right here of the lit up dragon coming towards the camera always creeped me the hell out as a kid and I always fast forwarded past it on the tape to avoid it. <laughs> and then they used it again out of nowhere in Night Train and got me by surprise. Like ah, god damn it! <laughs> And yeah, in retrospect, as an adult, it's not that scary. But I look back on that now as a funny memory, and it makes for a fun little unique story about childhood. All because of a single striking, scary visual that stuck with me. And while the visual element is very important, it's not just that that puts Duncan Get Spooked above all the rest. Duncan Get Spooked has some really eerie visuals in it that work in its favor, sure, but what makes it significant is not a lack of what we don't see, but of what we're not told. In this episode, there's a wonderful sequence where Rusty tells Duncan a story about a ghost engine. The engine was crossing a high bridge one gloomy night when it inexplicably tumbles over the side and plunges into the dark abyss below. 
it sinks, it drowns, and it's never seen again. Legend has it that its ghost still haunts the bridge to this very day. There's been other episodes that feature ghost engines. This isn't the only one. But why does this one in particular work so well? Duncan Gets Spooked is effective for two reasons. One, because we see it. They show us the visual of the engine's death. We see the frightening images of the engine falling off the bridge and plunging into the abyss. It's striking and haunting because engines are alive in this universe. They basically just show kids a sentient being drown and die. Call it morbid if you want, but that sort of visual is going to stick in a kid's brain. And two, this works so well because it's left ambiguous. We're never told if the engine was real or not. You may chalk this up as lazy writing, but it isn't. It's intentional. Sure, we can reasonably deduce that Rusty made up the story on the spot to scare Duncan, but maybe he didn't. There's that bit of doubt in our brains because we saw the visuals of it happening, so that element of reality is there. Rusty never flat out says at any point that he made the story up. And then later on, when Duncan supposedly sees the ghost and they show the Firefly silhouette, there isn't an explanation for that either. His crew, who made up the plan to spook Duncan, couldn't possibly have made the Fireflies form that shape. Is it a real spirit of the ghost causing the Fireflies to form that shape of an engine to make contact with Duncan? Or is it Duncan just seeing things? They never say! This is effective use of tone. The intentional ambiguousness makes the episode successfully eerie, and it sticks with you. Modern episodes don't do this. They just tell the audience straight up the ghosts and their ghost episodes aren't real. The Phantom Express, for example, tells us right away at the beginning that the ghost isn't real. Don't listen to him, Percy. He's just teasing you. There's no such thing as ghosts. And there's no visual of the ghost engine to try and convince us otherwise. And then they just show throughout the whole episode that it's just James pranking the others. So that eerie element is lost, and we as an audience are just sitting there waiting for the story to end because it's so boring. We know it's James, get on with it. Henry in the Dark, another spooky episode of the new era, has a very similar problem. Imagine if we were following Gordon or someone through that episode, and we saw the glowing green engine for the first time, the same time as him. It would have been so much more impacting because the audience doesn't know what that is. So it's scary. But no, they show Henry getting repainted, and they tell us it's him straight away. So all the scares throughout the episode are just so half-baked. That's not to say these are bad episodes or anything but they'll always have that empty feeling of something lacking. They do this because of what I can assume is probably some corporate mandate that the episodes have to be lighthearted. No experimentation with tone allowed or any sort of nuance. Kids aren't allowed to feel emotions other than happy because kids are stupid. Look at the funny minion. Look at the funny minion. No one's talking about the Phantom Express or the flatbeds of fear or whatever in 2020, but people do still talk about Duncan's ghost engine because its ambiguousness sparks that creative part of the mind that makes you want to try and connect the dots and make up your own conclusions of what happened to it. Ambiguousness is effective, and Duncan Gets Spooked is one of the best examples of it.